everybody, I'm Lindsay, and welcome to another episode of Banking Matters. Today, joining me is Jennifer Warfield. Jennifer has over 30 years of experience in the financial services industry, and her career has been marked by coaching advisors, developing sales, and innovating marketing strategies for financial services. She holds Pennsylvania insurance licenses and is a Series 7 registered with FINRA. She earned both her bachelor's and master's degree from Penn State University and holds the Certified Financial Planning designation. She is also the founder of Lightbulb Moments LLC, a female-focused development company dedicated to empowering women through tailored personal and professional growth strategies. She specializes in fostering leadership skills, enhancing career development, and promoting overall well-being, celebrating women as they achieve their fullest potential. Passionate about supporting women, Jennifer volunteers for several organizations, including Women of Greater Philadelphia and the University of Vermont Grossman School of Business's Women's Leadership Program. She is also an active member of Women in in Insurance and Financial Services, better known as WIFS, serving on the board of the Greater Philadelphia Chapter and was honored as WIFS National Woman of the Year in 2019. Welcome, Jennifer. We are so glad to have you share with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes. So we always like to start our conversations with finding out how our guests started their career in the financial services industry. Well, I knew from early on that I liked money. Um, I remember early on, my dad and I would wrap pennies on the kitchen table. Um, He had a change drawer and we'd go through and wrap the pennies and then we would take them to the bank. And I remember back then having that special time with my dad and learning a little bit about money. So back then I, I understood the importance of having money and saving money. So eventually uh, that interest made it to my uh, college days where I uh, majored in finance and economics. And I uh, thought I was going to be on Wall Street, but I graduated during a recession. And so I pivoted to the insurance and financial services industry. So I ended up at a very large household name type financial services company. And um, I spent many years there. Um, I worked in many different areas of uh, the back office operations and eventually found my way to the um, client facing side and ultimately to helping train advisors and agents. And that's pretty much what I've spent the last 20 or so years of my career doing. So um, so it's been a, a long and winding journey, but um, one that I have definitely enjoyed. That's awesome. We have found that most of our guests, they do, sometimes they don't really have a sure idea of what they're doing, but they're what they want to do, but they pivot and they do. It's always, they land in this winding spot, but it also aligns with your passions. And that's what it seems like your journey has led you to, (laughs) which is really exciting. Absolutely. Um, You know, as I've worked in financial services, you know, in a home office environment, you saw so many different women, um, be uh, leaders and, um, and and success stories within the home office environment. But as I made my way towards the field, um, I recognized that the opportunities for women were fewer and, and further between. So that's when I started to recognize that my passion really was centered around helping support women in finance and in business overall. That's awesome. So today, I would love to hear your thoughts on how um, our listeners who are mostly community bankers, how they can get involved with and partner with women to really start heading that up and making a difference. Well, you know, the great thing about banking is that it has a tremendous opportunity to touch so many people. Um, I know when we were thinking about um, sitting down and talking about this topic, um, a lot of different areas kind of came to mind for me. Um, First of all, obviously customers. I mean, banking represents one of the most trusted partners for the average consumer out there. So when you have a community bank um, full of people that know the local community, the people in it, Um, Just by offering a wide array of financial products um, and and opportunities, even beyond just the standard savings and checking, 
you know, so many banks offer so such a wide array of products that can help uh, the average consumer on their financial journey. And financial literacy is something that is, um, in a lot of cases, sorely lacking in this country. And banks can really step in in, in those types of environments. A lot of banks have in-house advisors to help with everything from mortgages to financial planning, insurance, um, and that provides a, a real one-stop shop opportunity for uh, those consumers that are in the local areas. Um, and for those banks that don't have that kind of personnel, there's a terrific opportunity to, to partner with um, folks in the community, advisors, agents that are just looking for that opportunity to sort of cross-refer um, and give the clients uh, an opportunity to be able to help protect themselves, um, save for retirement, and ultimately maybe save for those opportunities that they want to take advantage of in the future, um, those bucket list items. And, and that creates a tremendous bond of trust uh, in the community. And it provides um, that that client, the, the trusted advisor and partner that they need throughout their financial lives. As we know, lives change, circumstances change, but if someone has that helping hand along the way, that makes all the difference in the world. Um, another key area is um, business owners. We see women starting businesses at a greater rate than ever before. And I think if you look at recent stats, um, women are starting more businesses than men out there these days. So um, the thing is, though, a lot of women don't understand, and a lot of men, for that matter, don't understand all of the things that go into protecting a business and offering financial support to a business. I mean, we know about credit cards, but things like business transition, um, protecting against the loss of key contributors to the business, all of these types of things may be beyond the consideration for someone who is just starting a business. And that's where banks and um, that kind of support can really provide that level of service to those emerging business owners, helping them get beyond just the founding days um, to uh, uh, the success into the future. Um, so Really, there's a tremendous opportunity for banks to be able to guide people on the customer side, uh, as well as the the entrepreneurial side that so many women are starting to take advantage of these days. Yes. And so I know um, I'm in Tennessee and that's where I've done banking for the last 14, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I do know that our state association has a, done a huge push in regards to um meshing community banks with those business services and offering resources out there. And so I do know our state associations have really gotten resources together so that banks can help and be that one-stop resource, which is what I think you're starting to describe that would be so beneficial to the customers. Exactly. Exactly. And, um, and, and again, most people are looking for sort of a path of least resistance. So if they can find um, what they need in an atmosphere that they already know, they already trust with their money and with their relationships, um, that just eases that process for them. And it helps, um, again, give that bank uh, more of a deeper relationship with that customer as well. Yes, for sure. And so what about... Um, let's just kind of pivot from women in business and entrepreneurial, but also just from a standpoint of understanding more in depth about just the services that a bank can offer, how they can utilize that, like you said, to maybe push through to the future with these goals that they may have. Um, and just, I think the questions they could go to their bank with maybe as well would be another good support area to dig into. Absolutely. Um, when it comes to um, individual financial literacy, um, you know, one of the most important aspects, obviously, is making sure that folks have a little bit of emergency cushion, uh, emergency savings. Most people in this country don't have what uh, is recommended for an emergency savings account. Um, so by having three to six months worth of uh, savings, that is just a foundational aspect of giving people some peace of mind. Um, beyond that, of course, insurance. 
um, a lot of banks offer life insurance. And so that is a great chance to be able to help clients protect what they have worked so hard to build um, and help prevent um, that mad scramble, that financial devastation that can happen from the loss of uh, a key breadwinner in the family. Um, so by just offering those two types of insights into how people can protect themselves, that gives um, that family a leg up on most people out there. Uh, I think there are about 100 million people in this country who are underinsured. Um, and so that is a tremendous opportunity to, uh, again, serve that population but also secure the relationship with that customer in the long run. Because if somebody has banking products and insurance, um, and if you have an in-house advisor or a partnership with an advisor, the next step might be saving for retirement. And so things like annuities or other types of 529 plans, saving for college, all of those types of things can help a family along their financial journey. And so when a family starts out, we know that that most importantly, they're just talking about making ends meet. But as their income grows, as their um, wealth grows over time, um, by giving them avenues to be able to allocate that to um, productive, secure types of um, plans, that gives um, the client as I said, peace of mind, but also um, a security that 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 helps them know that they're saving for the future. And then beyond that, um, you know, a lot of um, financial institutions may partner with other types of uh, professionals out there, like estate planning attorneys, um, like um, again, uh, the legal field that can help guide people along the way uh, to creating trusts and other types of more advanced um, strategies that can protect assets for clients. Uh, again, I always say, you know, if you're not an attorney or an accountant, you shouldn't be practicing law or accountancy. But um, but by knowing the right people to call. Um, that gives a, a robust offering to a customer, to an institution, to be able to serve them better. Um, so again, there's a whole lot of opportunity to be able to further deepen the relationship with customers. And banks, just like accountants, are in that unique position of being a, a place of trust that people are comfortable and want to go to again and again. Yes. So a lot of what I'm hearing is what you've just described. It's almost like banks to be in such a good position to align themselves as a one-stop shop. If they are living and breathing that community banking lifestyle, then they are where our customers are going to seek those resources. They'll come in and say, hey, this is what I'm wanting to do. And even if the bank may not have, say, a partnership, but like where... Um, where I have worked in the past has been maybe a eight branch bank in about three counties. They at least personally know where they can at least send them to start that process. Um, and I think what you're describing when you were naming off the different areas that having that sense of community and knowing that what is available and what is offered is so important for our bankers to really have to be in touch with the heart of the community. Yeah, absolutely. You're so right. Um, you know, as much as we all are encouraged to do everything online these days and to 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 go into Google and find what we need, you know, studies show that the average person may do research online, but they don't want to leave all of the financial decisions out there to uh, to Google or to Chat GPT. Um, they want someone to guide them along the way, and so if they have a friendly face, a friendly place to go. Um, that's going to make them feel a lot better about that process because you know, we know that customers are encountering a lot of financial uncertainty um, these days. And so by having that reassuring presence, I think, um, is is a real win-win on both sides. Yes, for sure. And And as far as the financial uncertainty. I remember one of my professors when I was in banking school, he referenced how that you are a community banker, no matter what your position is, and you will be sought out as a financial 
guru in a sense, but just because of where you work. Again, he was talking Taylor all the way up to the CEO, and he was right when everything started to go amok in 2020. People were asking me my opinion. People were seeking me out, and I wasn't even customer facing at the time. And so he was nailed the nailed that one for yeah, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know the great thing too um, is that not only is it a great place for uh, you know for for customers from a service perspective, and you mentioned something really important the the value of working in the banking field is something that can bring a lot of satisfaction um, by being that kind of resource for people, by knowing your customers, by um, connecting with people. Um, that makes going to work every day something that becomes more of a calling uh, than just a job. And so um, that's another area I know that um, that plays an important role um, for uh, for uh, women, men, everyone in the community um, by providing a, a viable career path for so many folks out there. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I do know like his main point that he was making was that as someone that is in the financial services, just to, he was like, you don't have to know every in and out of the happenings. But he said, just to suggest to just stay on a weekly newsletter, just so that you are abreast of the issues that are going on um, the trends that are happening as well. And so again, it's uh, just, again, having your thumb on the pulse of the industry. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, that also brings to mind that, you know, not just the individual relationships, but, you know, having that role in the community where, where banks can offer education, um, financial literacy, uh, you know, I was in my local bank not too long ago, and I saw, you know, a whole array of brochures and educational materials. Um, so, again, these are things that may seem, uh, you know, kind of introductory, but those are important when someone is looking for information on a particular topic by having that readily available, whether it's through materials, whether it's through um, even sessions, lunch and learn type of sessions or education sessions for the public. Um, those are um, important things for the average consumer to know that they can get that kind of information and knowledge um, from their local community banks. Yes. And again, referencing back to our state associations and even American Bankers Association, they have an entire week dedicated to financial literacy that it is such a good push. And I know just from where I've been in Tennessee and I've experienced it with the banks that I help consult with, that their state banking associations really get involved. They pro provide amazing resources and material and ideas and hot topics for financial literacy. It's been it's been such a cool thing to watch just grow and bloom even over the last decade um, as far as the push for financial literacy. So I do feel like the banking industry as a whole is trying. Um, banks just have to seek out those resources that are there yep. for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, another area that I think um, allows banks to kind of get their their sort of, you know, message out there is, so many communities have different um, industry associations. So uh, again, I belong to several, um, but you know those are the types of, of uh, organizations that are often looking for educational content um, and expertise. And um, so folks who, who are uh, in banks that know about these different types of products, solutions, education, um, by partnering with local organizations, you can get your message out, you can promote, um, and again, just build awareness um, in local communities through organizations, um, whether they're sort of trade or industry organizations or women's organizations. All of these types of groups um, have a need for good content, and banks have an important story to, to tell, and so this, again, creates a good partnership opportunity. Yes. 
I um, honestly, that's one of my passions is helping people understand why we do what we do in the banking field and really just embracing that sense of community. So I thank you so much for your input today, Jennifer. Um, And one question that we always like to wrap up with with our guests is what is one piece of advice you would like to leave our guests with? Okay, well, one of the things that I have learned in my long career uh, I am a uh, recovering perfectionist. And so um, one of the things that I know that has always been a challenge for a lot of people, a lot of women, is that whole f- concern about everything being perfect. So what I want to do is encourage folks to be intentionally imperfect, um, that by getting your message, your work out into the world, um, It doesn't have to be completely perfect. Just take that leap, take that risk, go for it. And it never is something that you have to worry about if you are uh, in it, your heart is in the right place um, and that you are, um, you know, basing everything on goodwill. So if you are looking to kind of make a difference in your own career, in your own life, um, try to take a calculated risk and go for it. Now, of course, I'm on a banking podcast here, so I'm going to say that doesn't apply to finances and compliance, but everything else, uh, (laughs) go for it. That is great, Jennifer. I do love hearing that. I try to align myself with things that really matter and be intentional about everything. So that's great to hear that feedback on that. And for the rest of our listeners, that's Banking Matters.